Hi, my name is Dr. Beth Drolet, and I'm a pediatric dermatologist at the Medical College of Wisconsin. I also serve as the medical director for the Vascular Anomalies Center here at Children's Hospital of Wisconsin. In an effort to increase awareness and knowledge about SAFE syndrome, we have created a series of short seminars with information directed at questions uh, from our families affected by SAFE syndrome. Today, I'm going to talk about the long-term outcomes of SAFE syndrome. I would like to start off by acknowledging the many agencies that have supported our work in vascular anomalies and in SAFE syndrome. I also want to draw attention to our uh, International Face Syndrome Registry. Face Syndrome is a relatively new uh, entity, first described in the late 1990s. Because it is new and it is rare, it was necessary for us to uh, collaborate with many sites to study this syndrome. Dr. Don Siegel had started the International Registry, uh, Face Syndrome Registry, here at the Medical College of Wisconsin and has over 250 patients in the registry. This registry is essential, particularly when we talk about long-term outcomes of kids with face syndrome. I encourage you and your uh, doctors to participate in the registry so we can learn more about what causes face syndrome and be able to predict and prevent complications better. I would also like to draw your attention to a recent article that was uh, published earlier or late last year on um, diagnosis and care recommendations for children and adults with face syndrome. This is an important document that will give your uh, physician a lot of information about how to care uh, for children with face syndrome as they begin to get older. Much of what I'm going to talk about today is derived from that paper. As you know, face syndrome is the association of structural brain anomalies, hemangioma, arterial anomalies, cardiac and aortic arch anomalies, and eye anomalies. We also see abnormalities of the midline, uh, such as sternal defect and abdominal raphe defect. It is useful to go through each of these uh, organ systems to try to predict the long-term outcomes of children with face syndrome. There's a lot we don't know yet about the long-term outcome, but what we do know is it's quite variable. There are some children who have essentially no long-term medical issues, while other children have pretty significant issues involving multiple organ systems. In a recent study that was based out of our international uh, registry, uh, we looked at 25 kids that were older than four years of age and ran them through extensive neurodevelopmental testing. What we found is that approximately 40% of, of the children were normal and did not have scores that differ from uh, children without face syndrome. Approximately 12% of the, the children did have two or more tests in which they were uh, significantly um, below the national average. These results are similar to our experience with our uh, patients over the years and that um, the majority of patients uh, are neurodevelopmentally normal why a smaller percentage of children's will, children will have significant defects. What I'm going to go do now uh, is go through the different organ systems um, and talk about uh, what kind of long-term problems they can cause. So the P stands for structural brain or posterior fossa malformation. Uh, these are uh, not seen in every patient with face syndrome, but approximately 30% of children with face syndrome will have anomalies of the posterior fossa of the brain. The posterior fossa is also uh, is the region of the cerebellum, uh, and what we often see is that the cerebellum is developmentally small, often on uh, just one side of the cerebellum. It is important to note that the structural brain anomalies associated with face are there at birth and are not progressive. So your initial MRI will be able to find and diagnose those anomalies, and we don't see them get worse over time. The other uh, things that we can see with the development of the brain are malformations of the cortical or the front part of the brain. And we can also see anomalies of the middle part of the brain, uh, particularly uh, in the region of the pituitary um, and the corpus callosum. The long-term complications uh, from face are often uh, as a result of the neurologic uh, changes seen from the congenital malformations of the brain. Possible complications include migraine-like headaches, seizures, 
hypotonia or low strength, developmental delay, facial nerve palsy or hearing loss, speech and language delay, or swallowing and feeding issues. We also rarely see endocrine abnormalities, and particularly growth hormone deficiency, if there is an abnormal development of the pituitary or the middle part of the brain. Hemangioma complications are uh, thankfully becoming increasingly rare with the advent of the use of uh, oral uh, beta blockers for the treatment of hemangiomas. We can see scarring from the hemangioma. We can also see hemangiomas that will impair vision. Uh, we also can see hemangiomas that involving the airway that can cause uh, difficulty with breathing, particularly in the subglottic region. Finally, we can see uh, some of the hemangiomas that are in the inner ear canal uh, damage the hearing. Perhaps the most uh, complicated and confusing part of face syndrome are the arterial abnormalities that we see. Uh, most patients with face syndrome will have arterial abnormalities, and they occur uh, in approximately 80 to 90 percent of the patients. These abnormalities uh, affect the major cerebral arteries of the head and neck. Uh, and we believe they are a major cause of the migraine-like headaches. Uh, very rarely, if the, ab if the uh, arteries are narrow, uh, we can see uh, acute ischemic stroke. There will be another webinar um, detailing the complications and the association with arterial abnormalities uh, in the near future. Here is a schematic diagram of the arteries of the upper chest, neck, and brain. Children with face syndrome can have abnormalities of the aortic arch. Uh, they also can have abnormalities of the internal carotid artery. Uh, and finally, abnormalities of the circle of Willis. Face syndrome children also can have abnormalities of the development of the aortic arch and the branches of the subclavian artery, which comes off the aortic arch and feeds the upper extremities. About 30% of children with face syndrome will have abnormalities of the aortic arch. These uh, are important to diagnose and are frequently require uh, surgical intervention uh, to fix the aortic arch abnormality. Here's a schematic diagram that shows a normal aortic arch in red on the left, and in gray, the arch of a child with face syndrome. As you can see, the arch of the, the normal arch is the same diameter and makes a nice horseshoe shape, while the child with face syndrome has a dilation or an aneurysm and then narrowing. Uh, this narrowing uh, in this child would need to be fixed with a surgical repair. Once the children have surgical repair of the aortic arch, uh, they still need to follow with a cardiologist, but many of these children um, uh, are uh, normal and healthy. Finally, we can see developmental abnormalities of the eye. Uh, these are relatively rare in face syndrome and occur at about uh, 12 to 15 percent. Most of the time, they're in the back of the eye or the posterior segment of the eye and include abnormalities of the fetal vasculature or um, in the development of the globe or the size of the eye can be small, which is known as microephthalmia. And finally, we can see that the nerve to the eye is also small um, or optic nerve hypoplasia. All of these ocular uh, abnormalities can have significant uh, um, uh, impact on um, the vision of uh, children uh, with face, and uh, they need to be followed very closely with ophthalmologists. Ophthalmologi so in conclusion, we know that the long-term outcomes of children with face are quite variable. 40% of the children with face are neurodevelopmentally normal. About 10 to 20% uh, appear to be delayed. In our early analysis, we believe that delay is likely the result of the developmental anomalies of the brain, uh, such uh, particularly in the front of the brain or the cortex of the brain. The one uh, common thing that we did see in our uh, patients uh, with face syndrome is that uh, language and speech uh, seems to be a much more of a common problem with children with face syndrome, and we do recommend that they have a early in intervention and evaluation of language and speech.
Finally, I just want to, again, reiterate the importance of the FACE syndrome registry and encourage you and your family uh, to participate in this research. I'd also like to recognize the FACE uh, syndrome uh, community, which is a family advocacy group, which has uh, uh, been a big help in identifying questions for these webinars. Uh, and thank you for your support.